What is up? Just a little update here on the Mustang project. I picked up another Surface tablet. This one is a Pro tablet that runs a uh, full software because it's running an Intel i5 processor. Got a good deal on it now that they have the Surface Pro 3 out. Um, I got this one for the same price I got my RT for. Anyway, here, now I can run my uh, software, my tuning software for the Mustang. Just now getting it all figured out. I run a USB four port hub down here. I'm going to have to install this eventually, but that way it has my licensing right here for the software. And then there's two interfaces, one for the quarter horse tuner. It's plugged into the EEC, the computer, engine computer, and then one that goes over here to the wide band sensor. So it sees the quarter horse. It will see the uh, other deal too. Once I start logging, it was fun getting the USB or actually it's a serial to USB interface working for this thing with Windows 8. I finally played around with it until I got the device driver in there. So let's start. And here's my AFR. It's gonna take a second. There it goes. And it's flashing something. There we go. Right around 14. That's what it is right there. I just added a few other gauges. I just put this one in there. Mass airflow volts. I just made that gauge. That's what the pounds per hour converted to volts is. Yeah. In fact, I should log that. I'm going to see data log. I think that already is set to log, obviously. See a fuel. IMAF, it is set there. Oops, I didn't mean to do that, but oh well. I think all these are logged, so I'm gonna go for a ticket for a drive now. My goal is to mount that, like, I'm gonna put another bracket, I think. Put this right here. Let me get pulled out of the garage. I have so much glare in here. I'm gonna go drive up the road just to kind of make sure it logs okay and everything, but you know, that is pretty slick. This is a little thicker than my RT tablet. It's got the vents on the back for the cooling fan. Of course, it's not gonna go as long on battery, but it's doing pretty good right now. Okay, now that I'm home, I can go back on the software here. This was the, the screen I was using, my two dashboards. This one's just all, a lot more information, but it's just digital numbers. This is the one I like to use for quick reference. Here's that gauge I made, uh, mass airflow volts. This goes zero to five. I noticed something when I'm into the uh, charting so I go back to the logs that made while I was driving. It's uh, right here, uh, IMAF. It only goes zero to four, so it's not really a true representative of what max would be, five volts. So I don't know why they use that. And even here on the uh, nine to 17 is the scale they got for the, which showing up from an AFR, it's really 10 to 20. The numbers are correct, which is, you know, these scales, so this is just not going to show the most leanest point. Right here is going to be cruising in normal area right here, but, you know, 14 and 15 should be right here like it is on here. See, 14 and 16, 15 straight up, your normal range, so just glance at this right here is, should be dead center here, but it's not because they don't have the scale set. I don't know how to change that yet, so. But just keep that in mind. The numbers are still right. Plus, you can read the numbers right here live. Like, uh, okay, where we go? Uh, RPM at this moment in time, right exactly here, which is where this little bar is. Um, 
Always just 1100 RPMs. Total spark advance. Throttle position, which is right off of idle probably. There's the volts coming out of the mass airflow sensor. The actual mass airflow, some of these settings. This is my uh, AFR. Just for some reason in the uh, hardware, just as what it's calling itself. If I try to change it, it wigs out, so I know what it is. In here I have it labeled, so AFR, but I'm not gonna charge it, just calls what it's labeled as there, it just says none, but that's my AFR. So I could kind of go back, AFR is right here too. I could play this in real time, you kind of see when I, uh, and whatever I highlight goes yellow. So if I go uh, AFR, there's my air fuel, doesn't really make sense to put that that way. Um, RPMs are in yellow. You can see I kind of went through two gears here and let off. Went over here, went through two gears, barely got in a third and then let off. I can add speed to this chart too if I wanted to. And sometimes I probably should. Oops. Uh, go like this. Vehicle speed. Here we go. Let me show. And, that's, and now here's my here I was accelerating. You see acceleration as I go through the gears, and then cruising slid backed off a little bit. I didn't haul ass when I did this. See, I never even highest I went was 78.75. It looks like because that's where it scaled it automatically from uh, high to low. Out on an open road there. And I cruised and went, and then I uh, turned around and got onto it just enough so I want to come back here and look at the data. So this is the main thing I want to look at is just to kind of see I modify that mass airflow sensor to give me more scale more resolution for when I put the turbo on there so now you could see uh, the max it ever did got on wide open throttles right about 3.6 volts so you know 5 volt being the max output or maybe a little under there you can see I have some room to go so and uh, I did have to add like 40% more scaling to that uh, Mass airflow sensor uh, curve to get it to read once I modified it. So there's room there. Yeah, it'll probably be fine, you know, up to 10 psi boost or so before I need another mass airflow sensor. But the project is supposed to be low buck, and that's just a junkyard mass airflow sensor I modified. And see here. Anyway, I got this lined up. I'm going to hit play here and kind of see the gauges go. So you see the you can tell right there is my foot pedal position. See, I'm, I juiced it one more time with that off there. AFR, let's go back here to stop it. I could watch every, you know, usually I'll uh, play it through a couple times and watch one thing at a time, just I'm paying attention to air fuel ratio. Right here is like normal. So you see it's going plenty rich and wide open throttle. Might even be able to back that off a little bit. That's about how rich I'll need to be when I'm under wide open throttle with, uh, under boost. Go back here again, play, kind of watch the uh, mass airflow output. So. Just a little over three volts, three and a half volts or so. Um, so it leaves me, like I said, the scale's wrong, but five volts is the max. I got some, something left in it, you know, to uh, when I'm under boost. So I'll still build it. I got some resolution left. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, here's something interesting. Now I'm looking at the uh, mass airflow transfer curve. Um, doesn't look like much of a difference here, but it is. Um, I was at about 3.6 volts max, wide open throttle, nas naturally aspirated, so it's gonna be a little less than 3.7, which is about 26. So probably about 25 pounds per minute of air is all it can do. Um, so you can see, you know, as the output puts up, if I get about 4.7, I'm up to 51 pounds of air, you know, from, that's almost, that's double right there, so. There is definitely, probably, uh, 
plenty of uh, resolution left in that modified mass airflow sensor to uh, read, you know, a good 10 plus PSI of boost before I run out of resolution and have to modify it again. But this is a little buck, so it's, I don't plan on putting a lot of boost into it. Pretty cool anyway. It's nice to see this all working good on my uh, Surface Pro here. And one good smart thing to do is to keep a lot of these uh, back up all your settings, your tunes on uh, OneDrive or Xbox if that's what you use, which is good. That way when I go from computer to computer, I got the sweet.